this week we are not in my home studio. We are at the art garage, so that could be exciting. I'm Tree, and we are on location, and this is Project Transparency. So first thing the first, let's go have a look at my new quarter installation. So I've installed my new work at the art garage and I thought I'd show you guys. See it's just a little section, but still. But first we have the Sad Murder Clown from Pagliacci. We have a found object sculpture called Architecture from Cavalleria Rusticana and we have the Muse or Niklaus from the Contes de Offman and Olympia from the Contes de Offman and both of these are Copic marker drawings and then we have a diptych that is Judith from Bluebeard's Castle which is one of my favorite operas so yes, it's an opera-centric installation. So yes, that's some of the stuff I'm interested in right now. I'm interested in opera and ballet, and it's like I'm always interested in those things, but they're becoming more, they're, they have been becoming more relevant in my art recently, in the like the last like six months, seven months. So you'll be seeing more of those sorts of things. Especially with the way the Met does the Met does opera and the New York City Ballet does ballet. Yeah, they're beautiful in and of themselves and then there's a lot of room to, you know, riff. Second thing the second. I still have not heard back from some of the cons, so as yet I'm still just doing mini Minneapolis Comic Con in May. However, caveat second Thing the second part too. I may be teaching some classes and workshops at the art garage, so yay. And my becoming friend Jane is thinking about teaching some like cold wax and art theory sorts of things, hidden art theory classes. So that's exciting for, you know, me because Jane takes this all as seriously as I do, which is kind of nice. I'm not opposed to the floof of the cork and canvas, but I do think you need to balance it with things that are more serious. That's why they're fundraisers. Third thing the third. I actually have a topic this week, sort of. Um, okay, as artists, we get a lot of very odd comments and my, my least favorite comment I get is either it's interesting or it's fun because usually that's backhand for I have no idea what you're doing I don't understand it or I think it's less than these other things which is fun everybody has their own opinion of the thing but those kind of comments make me really really unhappy unless it's like some people say it and you know that they're serious, that, that they really think that what you're making is interesting and fun and are excited about it, but most of the time it's... <sighs> people who think that Monet is the beginning and ending of everything. And Monet's fine, but... So yes, here is kind of a off-the-cuff treatise on how to respond to an artist, in person or online. Because honestly, the online stuff is almost worse. Be sincere. First thing to be is be sincere in your interest in somebody's work. And you know, sometimes you just, their, their work isn't your jam. However, there is this thing called, you know, while it's not your jam, seeing it for the value that it has. It's one of those things. I have a lot of friends who are artists who their work is isn't what I enjoy and that's fine 
There is nothing wrong in having different styles and different things that are interesting to you. However, whenever I approach one of those those artists, I also remember that this is their interest. So constructive criticism is the best thing to have. So there's sincerity and constructive criticism. Also think about what you're going to say. Make connections in your own way. And you know, sometimes your connections are not going to be the connections that the artist had in mind. It's this entire thing called reader response theory. And there's nothing wrong with reader response theory. That, you know, the, the death of the author, which is, you know, a problematic thought, even though it's, you know, an appropriate thought, it, it's not. The death of the author slash death of the artist is much more complicated than the artist and the author's intent or history or anything doesn't come into play anymore because it does. However, <laughs> the audience's background and, and interests and connections are just as important. And sometimes they're more important, especially when we're talking about like abstract stuff because usually abstract stuff is much more much more amenable to having an audience's story written upon it. So, sincerity, constructive criticism, and think making connections via thinking. Also, something else that really, really helps, not just saying it's nice, because that's not, it's not helpful, it's not constructive criticism. It, we're back in constructive criticism. Not that you have to criticize. Plenty of people do not feel like they have enough artistic background or whatever to criticize a piece of art, and that's fine. However, the entire idea of art is a method of communication, so if it's not communicating to you, then you have every right to criticize it. it really feel empowered even if you, you, you know, don't have an artistic background to, to interact with a piece, to have an opinion, to have a thought about it, because your connections are just as important. I just keep circling back through that stuff that the audience's thoughts are valid and to be constructive and to make connections. Maybe that's all that there is. And, you know, tangentially, like, on the internet because social media is a thing that artists use more and more and more of, you know, me with the multitude of social media platforms I use. Bring all of those things into your physical comment. You know, actually show that you thought about it. You know, even if it, even kind of knee-jerk reactions, you know, they, they do have thought and val validity to them. You know, that's fine, but you know, again, more than that's nice or because there's no place for an artist to connect with you about their work that way. That, that's the nice thing about social media and meeting artists in person and all of that sort of stuff where you have some sort of one-on-one -on -one interaction with the, the person who made the art you're looking at is that you can ask questions and you can have a conversation and you can have a connection to the art and the artist that, you know, wasn't necessarily available once upon a time. So take advantage of it. All right. <laughs> I think I have ranted and raved about this enough. Uh, if you enjoyed this or any of the other things I do, like, subscribe, comment, critical comments, constructive comments, be thoughtful, make connections, please. Um, I would really appreciate it. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support Project Transparency and Tentacle Made Studios. If you would like something more, more singular and more connected to an artwork, I do take commissions. And I do have things like Redbubble and Store Envy, so there are different places to get my work should that be a thing you want to do. Alright, I am going to go <laughs> do some work since I'm actually in my studio at the art garage and I have a couple hours to kill. I will see you guys next week.